Hey, welcome to Hello Talk. I'm Corey Kerr. I want to have a segment of this where I just show you what shirt I'm wearing today. Every video, because I love my shirts. They're awesome. I wonder if I have a hundred. Who knows? This is season one of a hundred days of animation, day four. And uh, today I inked a little bit, so you can watch that going on. I'm wearing pixelated sunglasses to try to distract you from the fact that I'm in my late 30s and for some reason I still get a zit occasionally. Cut to drawing. So what you're seeing me draw here is that propaganda poster I was talking about before um, using the Wacom Cintiq uh, that I got on eBay years ago for half price. And um, I'm just doing the inks here. I'm going to vectorize the stuff later, but I just find the inks a lot easier to do in Photoshop. If I had unlimited time, I'd be doing this traditionally, but uh, because I'm trying to do a full animation by myself, I'm just doing it digitally uh, for most things. So um, I recently have been looking a lot more into existentialism. I've always been kind of interested in existentialist theory, um, but I kind of put together like a kind of a lecture on it. Um, not so much a lecture, but kind of how you can apply the principles of existentialism to a creative endeavor. And I thought it might be interesting to kind of go through that. Now, a lot of people have a problem with existentialism because they don't understand it. And there's a phrase that goes out there, uh, having an existential crisis, right? People don't really understand that. I think it's become a catchphrase um, when people are like questioning kind of what's going on in their life or they're confused or whatever. But that's not completely what an existential crisis is about. And so I want to talk about existentialism. The, the basis of existentialism comes from the root of to exist. And so the, the main point is that you exist and that alone defines you as an individual, not your role in society or your role in relationship to other people. Um, our society has an issue uh, kind of problematically with defining people by their role in relationship to other people. Uh, this is my brother, this is my wife, she is so-and-so's girlfriend, he is, you know, an employee or of whatever, which turns that individual into an object, um, and that's kind of problematic. So, if you think of everybody as existing as an individual, and that alone uh, gives them value, then that's kind of an interesting, interesting place to start from. And there are some main tenets of existentialism. Um, let me dispel some myths first. It is not necessarily, though it can be, um, an atheistic philosophy. Uh, there are a lot of existentialists um, that are atheists. There are also a lot of existentialists that are religious. Um, there, there are foundational existentialist philosophers that are Jewish and Christian and whatever else. And so it's not a religious um, set of beliefs um, or uh, way of thinking of things. And so one of the things that you need to get out of your head is that you somehow tie it to morality um, or whatnot. Now, it has been used to uh, excuse a lot of amoral behavior and, and, and whatever. That doesn't really matter because existentialism in and of itself is about um, you improving you. You're going to do what you can do um, to improve your situation. And the main tenet, the main idea is that you are responsible for what happens in your life. Take ultimate responsibility. So you exist. Now what are you going to do? You, your whole life is open to you. You're going to get to choose your own adventure. Um, and so let's look at a, let's look at one of those things. Um, you are defined not by who you are or your role um, to other people or even what you profess to believe or say that you believe, um, but you are defined by what you do. Your actions, our actions as individuals define us. Um, recently, I was listening to this guy and he was going on and on and on and on and on about he, how he's a writer. Um, and yet I put that in air quotes because he doesn't write anything. Literally what he was talking about was how he struggled to find time to write and he struggled to um, find time to do this you know, he wanted this novel, he's got this great idea. Everybody's got a great idea, dude. You're defined by your actions. You're a writer when you sit down and write. You're an artist when you sit down and draw, right? Now, there are certain levels of quality 
um, within each of those things, but you can't just claim to be something and be that thing. Uh, and I see this a lot with, with writers for some reason. Um, no, let me say that again. I see this a lot with people who say that they are writers, but they don't write anything. Um, you're defined by your actions. You're defined by what you do. Um, and you're defined by what you're doing right now. Um, somebody is defined as an evil person when they do evil things. We don't say that Hitler was an evil person because uh, he had a weird mustache. It wasn't his facial hair that made him evil. It was the fact that he was a downright evil person who did evil acts. He, he did things that were bad, and thus we judge that he's a bad person. It was his actions in history that defined him. Um, and, and the same with people that we say are good. We don't say that Mother Teresa is good because she told us that she was good. Is because she spent her life doing good things. And so we say that she is good. You're defined by your actions. Not by what you profess, but your actions. So that's one thing that you can choose um, who you want to be by acting. Because you have control over the things that you do with your life. Now there are many things that are outside of your control. But ultimately, you get to choose what it is that you do um, and how you act. And so you can define yourself by your actions. And you're not defined um, by things that are outside of your control. So the facts exist, though, um, but you choose their value. So for example, um, I, I have certain facts in my life that I cannot control. Uh, they're completely outside of my control. And at, at certain points in time, I've actually tried to control them. I've actually tried to change the facts of my life. When I was a kid, I was told a lot of that baloney of, if you believe it, you can achieve it, right? And I don't actually believe this psycho babble um, uh, or what you might call kind of the self-help theories of uh, your belief you know, is the only thing that drives the course of your life. And if you just can visualize it, then you're done. Now, I believe in the power of the mind, and I believe that your mind has great power to do a lot of incredible things. But there are certain limitations. I'm 5'6". I'm a short dude. I've always been a short dude. I will always be a short dude. I can't change that. Just by thinking about it, I can't make myself taller. And I know I can't make myself taller because I tried. As a kid, I tried uh, of thinking really hard. I woke up every day and I thought, today I'm going to grow. And I did all the positive mantras and everything, but it is a fact of my life that I'm short. And that's fine. Now, here's the deal, though. I get to choose how much value that has in my life. And so um, it is a fact, but the value is not innate or inborn or a part of that fact. The value is how much I ascribe to it. And so the idea that... You, can, you cannot be anything that you want, but your actions define you, means that I can recognize, okay, I'm a short dude, whatever, that's fine. And I don't let it bug me. I don't actually add a lot of value to that, outside of the fact that I'm probably never going to be in the NBA um, or be able to reach things on tall shelves. I don't care much beyond that. I've got step stools, and I'm not that interested in sports in the first place. And so... Ultimately, the idea that those facts uh, have value in and of themselves is false. And the way that the existentialists give this as, as kind of an example is you have two people. They both committed a number of crimes in their life. One of them gets hit, the, hit in the head and has amnesia. And so um, he doesn't have uh, memories of his past life, right, as, as a criminal. They, all, they wake up one morning. The one guy feels trapped by his actions. Um, he remembers that he's a criminal and he adds a lot of value to that. He doesn't feel like he can change because of the decisions that he's already made in his life, and he continues to commit crimes and be a criminal. Whereas the other person wakes up, doesn't really know what's going on, can't remember the past, so those facts, they exist. They didn't disappear, but to him they have no value because he can't remember them, and he goes and lives his life as being a good person. And so um, at any given time, you can choose to do something, right? There are people, that, the people out there that often ask me, how do you have time to do this? I make time, dude. I make time. I carve it out. It, I just make it happen, right? There are lots of things that you have to do to make it happen. Now, I wish I had the time to draw for 8 to 10 hours a day, but I don't. I've got a full-time job, and that's one of the choices that I've made. Um, so anyway, there's that. And then the another foundational tenet of existentialism is that you take responsibility for 
everything in your life. And the reason you do that is because responsibility is a super powerful position. It's really powerful. Um, because as soon as you start to blame or as soon as you start to say, um, you know, well, that's outside of my control or whatever, um, you're giving up power to be able to control what's going on in your life and to be able to control your actions, which is the only thing that you really have power over is what you can do, right? I can't control what other people do. And trying to control what other people do is going to be super frustrating for me because I will always be able to... I will always fail on that. I will never actually be able to control what other people do. But if I take responsibility for everything that goes on in my life, no matter what, no matter if somebody else caused it, no matter if it's just a something that happened out of the blue or whatever, or if it's a series of confluence of events that happened way outside of my control, if I take responsibility for that and own that, then I can have zero excuses and I control my destiny and I be able to I can be able to do that. I don't worry about the things that other people um, that other people can control because that's outside my control. So I try not try not to worry about it. But what I do is I take responsibility for my thoughts, my actions, my beliefs, and my feelings. And if I can do that, then I am in control of the ship that steers through this life. Now the ocean is still going to have its waves and storms and whatever, but I control that ship. So. Then you want to act authentically, right? And so this idea that you create yourself and live accordingly um, is interesting. So I don't set goals um, in, in the traditional sense. And so a lot of people will set goals to write things down, and that works for a lot of people. But for me, that doesn't work because that is an opportunity to fail um, rather than rather than be something. And I'm more interested in becoming something than I am in checking boxes off or crossing things off of lists. I would rather become something than than just be able to just say, hey, look what I did, right? I'd rather be an artist than say, look, I created something, right? Or look, I have these awards or these outside things that have validated uh, you know, my work. My work has value because I decide that it has value. If other people also want to make that decision, hey, that's awesome. I actually really appreciate that. And I do take value in that. I do have validation. But ultimately, I decide what it is that I want to be. And then I act according to that. I act uh, to be that thing, right? If I'm defined by my actions, then I don't need to set goals as much as I need to say, you know what? I'm going to be someone who does this type of thing. And then when uh, those events or challenges come up in my life where I get to choose, you know, am I going to do this or that? Well, I'm this type of person because I've decided to be. So the answer is typically very clear. I'm going to do the thing that that type of person would do. And so my actions are driven by this choice that I make because I can create myself in who I want my who I want to be and then I choose to act accordingly, right? And that's called living authentically. And if you're living an inauthentic life, you have that cognitive dissonance and cognitive dissonance is where you are not acting in accordance to what you've chosen to be. So if I've chosen to be a religious person and I act a horrible misogynist, bigoted, racist, terrible person, you should have cognitive dissonance with that because you're going against what you profess to believe, right? That shouldn't sit well with you. Um, if you say that you're the type of person who isn't going to screw somebody over, then it should mess with your head when you screw somebody over. Otherwise, you're living inauthentically, right? And so if you choose to be a specific type of person, then you will act in accordance to that. Um, and when you don't, that's when we say that our conscience comes into play and tells us, you know, uh, that's wrong or this feels weird. It feels weird because it's it's inauthentic um, to what it is that you want to do. So anyway, you don't have to become a, a existentialist. And there are some parts of the theory that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, and, uh, and I can get into that another time. But I do like the basic ideas of taking total responsibility and no excuses for your life. Don't blame other people for what's going on. And living authentically to uh, what you've created um, and who you want to be. I want to be this person. I live authentically to that. And that, that makes a lot of those decisions for me. And I like those type of things. Um, that I have total control over the destiny of my life. Not control to manipulate others. I can't go to somebody else and say, because I have total control over the destiny of my life, you have to give me a publishing deal. Because um, that's I can't impose my agency and my choice on other people. But I can choose how I act and how I navigate uh, this world and this life. That gives this world and this life 
value. Um, otherwise, uh, you're just kind of a, a leaf blowing in the wind, um, letting other people control how you think, feel, and believe. And so, anyway, I, I like existentialism, and I can talk about it for a really long time. But uh, there's me inking some stuff, and that's uh, that's day four. I'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow. And as always, you can check me out at coreykerr.com. That's C-O-R-Y-K-E-R-R.com. All the links are in the bio. You can look at those. Um, hit me up. Leave a comment. Let me know you're. Uh, let me know you're watching. You're listening. <laughs>